was so correct when she said that sometimes we say the little things. Mm -hmm. But when those things are removed, come on, come on, preacher. we realize they weren't so little at all. Amen. And some of the things that we thought was oh so fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget my uncle visiting him at the hospital, he, he having uh, stomach cancer. Uh, a, a man who was rumored uh, in the Delta and the small towns of Mississippi, uh, one of the first black men that I ever knew that white folks called Mr. Right. Y'all too young, y'all don't remember that. You could live to be 90 years old, you still didn't get no Mr. in front of your name. I still remember that. But he was Mr. Jerry Bland. And to me, it took at least three good men to bring him down. He was Mr. Jerry Bland. But I remember visiting him in the hospital in Memphis. And this one statement that he made has stayed with me ever since, Brother George. And that was, he just wished he could eat a hamburger. It had got down, been it down to the lowest common denominator. Amen. And so no wonder it is that the old people used to tell us that while things are going good with you, while the blood is running warm in your veins, Solomon, preacher Solomon said, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, while you can still get around. That's right. That's right. Lewis, I know it. God have to give you some sense. You don't get no sense on your own. That's real. That's real. And so then we thank him. We thank him that God, Dexter, gave us a mind to gather our family up. If you want to keep your family, uh, lead your family into worship. You can take them on vacation. Uh, you can buy them a car. Mm -hmm. What good is it doing if you buy that 16, 17-year-old a car mm -hmm. and you won't even make him go to church? We are the priest of our house. Yes, sir. Right. And so then, as the man goes, so goes the house. And so a real man takes the stance that um, I'll die for mine. I'll die for mine. And so before you come in here, you got to come in over me. I may not be able to hold you out, but but one thing about it, you got to come through me. Because everything that's up under here, God left me over. Isn't that right? And so then we don't just come to church so be able to tell somebody later on in the day, you know I went to church. We don't come to church for a good feeling, to, to be able to just get chill bumps and all that. Mm -hmm. We come here to get a word from God, That's right. That's to right. get some communication from God. God, help me, help me. because I learned that I can't help myself. Amen. Uh, uh, many of us have a Romans 7 experience mm -hmm. that when we talk to ourselves yes. and tell ourselves what we're not going to do, Amen. that we yet find ourselves doing that same thing yes, that we just said we wasn't going to do. No wonder it is that Paul the apostle cried out and said, oh wretched man that I am. CJ, doing wrong don't bother you until you don't want to do it no more. It's a bad thing when you can't stop doing what you're doing and you don't even want to do it no more. In other words, something besides you has got a hold of you. Right. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Yeah. Going to church ought to be more than putting on a suit. Right. It ought to be more than lying in the pastor's pocket. Yeah. It ought to be more than talking about how pretty our building is. Right. But somebody ought to be able to tell a difference in me. old people wasn't versed in homiletics or human hermeneutics, but they put it like this, Mother Bailey. They said the things that I used to do, I just don't do them no more. 
God is a deliverer. Yes. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, he said that I came mm -hmm. that you, we, you might have life mm -hmm. and have it more abundantly. Turn, if you will, to the book of Colossians. We preached last week. I really appreciate the Lord about this is better. Yes, sir. I'm seeking Brother Alex uh, better. Come on, man. I'm seeking to do better. But like the old folks said, trouble in my way. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. What you say, preacher? What you say? I've been got past the point about not too proud to, too proud to cry. I'll be. All right. All right now. I made the decision a long time ago whether I wanted to go to jail or want to go home. Right. I made that decision, but yet trouble gets in my way. Right. And, and, and Peter tells the, the tribulation church, the Jewish church, Peter tells them, that your adversary, yes. the yes, devil. Yes. You see, it's a bad thing when people think everybody on their side. Mm. Come on now. Bad. You, you easily trick. You think everybody loves you because everybody showing you their teeth is on your side. Come you, you, you really in for a surprise. Yes. But, but Peter says, your adversary, the yes. devil, yes. is as a roaring lion yes, seeking whom he may devour. That's why that James took up the refrain, and James says, think it not strange. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Some of us, Brother Wayne, have become acquainted with grief and with sorrow. Mm -hmm. Some of us have become acquainted with adversities. Yes, sir. And so then we don't think it's strange All right. when things begin to go contrary That's right. to the way that we go. Come on, preacher. Jesus went to sleep in the hinder part of the ship. That's right. He had told them, let us go over. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I'm getting ready to go over. I'm getting ready to go over. I ain't come here this morning just so I could say I was going to church. I come here to do better. I come here for a better life. And so they had sat there and listened at him talk. But now if the talking don't do nothing, you just talking. Let me see. Jane Brown put it like this. He said, just talking loud and saying nothing. And so now if you're talking, you're speaking. Because Jesus said, now Paul said, he said, now the flesh profited nothing. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Spirit meaning that they came from the God, from God, they came from God, and so therefore they would produce life. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Jesus told them, you've been listening to me talk. Now let us go over. Uh. We've been going around the same mountain. I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 I don't know why you, I don't know why you using a paper, uh, giving a program every week, and it's the same program every week. Been going around the same thing, the A and the B selection, the sermonic solo. Go ahead, preacher. You talking about the casino and and all this, and then hump, hooping and hollering, and then taking another offering, mm -hmm. about the fourth or fifth one, and then we go home. <laughs> same thing. Yes, going around the same mountain. What you telling me? I'm listening to you. Mm -hmm. And what you telling me ought to change me. That's real. That's right. Because the Bible says that faith come by hearing. Yeah. And hearing the word of God. And so then if I'm not stiff-necked, if I'm not circumcised, if I've got the right storm that has come through my life. Mm -hmm. You know what? Sometimes in the house, I remember when those kids were coming along, you just couldn't get no peace. You try to talk to them and everything. Say, no, baby, no, baby, sit down. Don't do that. Trying to watch the game or trying to do something. But baby, please, sit down, sit down. That's okay. You know what? You working on it. You working on it. I'm going to give you what you look for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Finally, they get what they're looking for. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Extension code. Yes, sir. Change your mind. After you get through doing that, you can't hear a rat lick ice in there. Yes, sir. 
So it is that God has to deal with some of us like that. He has to chasten and has to correct us because the writer said that he whom the Lord loved, he chastened. Preacher, I keep telling him, so don't feel sorry for us. It was good for me that I was afflicted because before I was afflicted, I went astray. God had to, you couldn't bring me back. You couldn't bring me back into line. God had to reach out and get me and bring me. And so then Jesus told his disciples, he told them, he said, look, let us go over to the other side. Let's not stay where we are. Let's not be satisfied with where we have attained because God has higher heights and deeper depths. Uh huh. It has not yet appeared what you shall be, but when he appeared, you shall be as he is. He's able. God is able. That's why I'm here this morning. I'm not here this morning. I'm not serving a dead God. I'm serving a God that is able. I'm serving a God that will take you from the crack house to the cold house. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I'm serving a God that will take you from the house that you're living in to the house that you wish that you lived in. Let me see if I can put it where I can understand it. I hear uh, the Bible said he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask, I think. And so he tells them, let us go. But, but it's not going to be without adversity. You see, that's why. That's why Sister Lakeisha Chan I told you. Look, look, that, that's why it is. That so many saints fall out. They start out running real hard. <laughs> Pastor, let's have a prayer meeting. Pastor, let's have a conference. Pastor, let's do this and Pastor, do that. But when the winds begin to roar, when, when the waves begin, then I don't even see y'all call. Where you at, sister? I just, I just don't feel like coming today. Satan trying to sit you down. Satan trying to shut your mouth. Satan trying to put you, to take you out of the game. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And that's the reason that the Bible says that we must walk by faith. And not by sight. <laughs> not by sight. So Jesus is in the ship and he go to sleep. <laughs> Let me get a little rest. That's right. I've been teaching and doing all that. Y'all rowing the boat. What I'm up just looking at you for? You ever ask yourself that sometimes? You up two, three. What I'm up for? Yeah, on, no, you got to get up and go to work tomorrow. You just up. <laughs> Jesus went on to sleep. That's right. When you know who you are and know where you're going, you can go and go to sleep. Yes, sir. Go to sleep. When you know whose hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's the reason I keep telling you men that you got to get a bulldog tenacity because, you see, if the devil can sit you down, the other one just going to fall because I don't care how good she is with the bills. I don't care how strong she seemed to be. The Bible says she is the weaker vessel. That's right. All right. She is not built to take what you can take. She's not built to take. Now, God done blessed us with some good women. And they are strong women. But it's time for us now to take some of the load off of them. Because, oh, they clapped in. They ain't clapped all day. It's time now for us to take some of the load off of them. You ain't got to get up before they praying. I'm going to move you over. I'm the man. I get up before you and I begin to petition God for my household. And I ask God, lead me, guide me, teach me how to be the head of this house. Devil not going to come through my house and run ran, ram shack, just take over and do whatever he wants to do. Right. Yeah, uh, because it look because we are like a tree that's planted by the rivers of what it may be in. It may be in, but it won't break. Uh, and when you come back, baby, it's still standing. <laughs> when you come back, I'm still on my post. Uh, when you come back. Mm -hmm. I'm moving on time. I need to go give you a subject about Jesus. Oh, look at your neighbor. 
I ain't even took no scripture yet, but just look at your neighbor. <laughs> look at your neighbor and tell him, say, it's not easy. It's not easy. But it's worth it. It's, it's not easy. Uh -huh. It's not, not easy. Uh -huh. What you see me doing, look at somebody else and say, tell them, say, I'll make it look easy. I'll run up out of here. I'll make it look easy. Man, I used to see some of that stuff Michael Jordan do, man. I'll be thinking, I go up there and I try to do it too. This ain't as easy as it look. I make it look easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. So Jesus goes to sleep and the wind began to become contrary. You told us we was going somewhere, but look at all. I'm going through hell and high water and I'm not going on my word. I'm going on your word, what you told me to do. Jesus wakes up out the hind of pie, and they begin to cry, and they ask him a question. He, they asked him, they said, Master, mm -hmm. carest thou not that we perish? Huh? You see, you got to get that out your vocabulary. You got to know that you know that you know that God is on my side. That's the reason. That's the reason I don't fool Brother Joy with church folk. Because, see, church folk, when they don't like you, they say God don't like you. Uh -huh. It's something about you, you know, they don't like the shoes you wear. They don't like the hat you got on. They don't like the car you drive or whatever. So they find some reason to say that God don't like you. Uh -huh. But, you see, that's settled already in heaven because God is love. Yes, and before the foundation of the world, my God loved me and chose me in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Oh, you'll never be nothing in no relationship until you are satisfied, until you are convinced in your heart that that person loves you. All right. You can't stay married. Uh-huh. You can't even stay at work. A man try to give you some overtime. So, no, don't give me no overtime. I got to go home. <laughs> yes, sir. You got to be satisfied. You got to be established in knowing that God loves you. And that is why it's so great to know that the Bible says you are saved by grace through faith that not of yourselves. Once that you realize that your relationship was sealed through his love and not yours. Then you understand because we all go through the vicissitudes of life. We all have good days and we have bad days. We have days we don't even want our clothes touching us. We have days that we're so impatient. We are so irritable. We just, we just wake up mad. Sleeping with a fist on. So what's wrong with you? I don't know. I just. Yes, sir. So then, my confidence cannot lie within me. My confidence has to lie on a power greater than myself. Right. That even when I am swaying, mm -hmm. I know he is steadfast. Right. And knowing that while I'm wavering, that God will bring me back in. Yes, sir. I cannot depend upon my abilities. I depend upon God. And so there he asked them, they said, Master, cares not that we perish? He wakes up and he says, oh, you of little faith. Little faith. Little Did I not tell you, let us go over unto the other side? It's not easy. But it's worth it. It's worth it. The Bible says, preacher, he said that all that run, run for a crown. But you have to run lawfully. God is not going to let you do it on your own. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the reason wonderful folks don't make it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's wonderful folks don't make it. Mm -hmm. Paul says, if I glory, in I'll glory in my infirmities. Yes, right. <laughs> you see, it was at my weakest point Ooh. was when God caught my hand. <laughs> It wasn't when I was strong. It wasn't when I had it going on. It wasn't when friends was on every side. It was when I found myself by myself uh, that God reached out his hand. Uh, and he told me, he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, uh, and I'll give you rest. Uh, ain't about two or three of us know it, Brother Joy, but I found in him. 
a resting place. <laughs> uh -huh. I used to didn't understand it, Sister Tracy Willie, why it was that I'd be in church, I'm ready to go home, it's hot, we didn't have no air conditioning then, flies buzzing and everything, I have the window out and whatever, the flow I could see, you could see through the flow and whatever, <laughs> but I look over there and some old mother just go to shaking her head, <laughs> and I'm like, what's she shaking her head about? <laughs> but somebody said, when I think about the goodness of the Lord, <laughs> and all that he's I'm preaching right now. I don't know what you're waiting on. All that he's done for me. My soul. Sister Levine Case, I found out that you got to see God for yourself. I found out you got to see God for yourself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got to come to the place. You got to come to the place, God. It's not easy. But it's worth it. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy at all. I don't feel like this all the time. <laughs> this don't, this don't, this don't float my boat all the time. <laughs> but it's worth it. Yes, sir. Paul said this light affliction, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, right. said, I'm persuaded that it's not worthy mm -hmm. to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. <laughs> the songwriter said, Some glad morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody tell them, say, I'm living my funeral. I'm living my funeral. Y'all ain't got to come in here and stay no five hours and put me in heaven. I'm living my funeral, honey. Oh, Jesus. You got a rascal ain't been to church in 90 years except on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. And you want to keep us here six hours in order to convince us that he went to heaven. And you know, folks, folks are so funny. Like they'll sit up there and do like this right here, yeah, 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 and then leave out them. They know that Negro went to hell. <laughs> somebody, somebody get real raw and say he bust hell wide open. <laughs> and say, if he don't go to hell, I ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm living my funeral right now. <laughs> While the blood is running warm, I'm trying to find out what it is that God requires. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, okay, Colossians, Colossians, Colossians. You there? Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. Here the Bible says in the 12th verse, he said, Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of of dark. It's not easy, but it's it, but, but but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Sometimes people say, you Pastor Bland, what you preaching is too easy. What do you mean that you're saved by grace? What do you mean that that, that you depend upon the finished work of the cross? Uh, that that's just too easy. I know you got to do something. I know you got to go to church. I know I know you got to sing in the choir. I know you got to pay tithes. I, I know you, you got to buy the pastor a suit. I I, I know you got to Go cross the seas and be a missionary. I, I know you got to do something. It, it, it's just easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know something. It wasn't easy. Come on, come on, preach. It was not easy. It was not easy because I want you to know that if I could have yes, bought my own salvation, I would have bought it. <laughs> if, if, if I could have uh, purchased, if I could have uh, conformed my behavior, uh, to the law. Have you ever, guys, have you ever made up your mind? Why you that? Turn to Romans five. Have you ever made up in your mind that you weren't gonna do nothing no more? I know one time that I had just started cussing so much, I said, I'm just tired myself. I, I don't want to cuss no more. And, I, and, I, and somebody did, and I said, you made me cuss. I wasn't gonna cuss. <laughs> okay, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. Come on, Romans five. Go ahead, preacher. Uh, if I could have. See, it, see, the, see, grace is not an option. It's essential. Come on now. It's essential. It, it's not easy, but, but, but it was worth it. Yes. Romans 5, you there? Yes. Look at Romans 5 and 6. All right. Romans 5 and 6. For, for, for when we were yet without strength. That's what it says, you see, God can't help me until I understand that I can't help myself. What makes me so strong today is not that I'm strong. What makes me strong today is, is that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I don't try to do nothing. God, you got it. I tried. I messed up everything. I messed up my job. I messed up my marriage. I messed up my children. I messed up everything. And so now you got it. And I'm not going to try to take it back. 
Because my, your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I know that God can take a loser and make a winner out of him. I know he can do it. I know that that which you could not do, if you move out of the way, God will. He'll handle it. Uh-huh. And you see, and he, God ain't your co-pilot either. Uh-uh, because God said, I will not share my glory with any man. Uh-huh. And that's the reason that Paul, with all of his education, taught at the foot of Gamaliel, one of the most preeminent rabbinical teachers that was in Jerusalem at that time. They took him from Antioch when he was just a small boy and put him at the feet of Gamaliel. And Gamaliel taught him in so many languages and taught him in the Hebrew scriptures and in the law. But when Paul met Christ, yes, Paul yes. says, I chose not to know anything yes. yeah, but Christ and him crucified. Yes, As a matter of fact, in Philippians, the third chapter, he said, that which was gained to me, I counted loss. Uh -huh. <laughs> because what he found was better than what he had. And as long as I try to hold on to what I have, mm -hmm. then God can't help me. Can't help. Because, Brother Wade, there is a journey that a man has to take in order to know Christ. Come on, preacher. You can't know Christ because of the money that you put in the offering. What you, say, preacher? you can't know Christ because of the uh, Baptist Sunday school conventions that you go to. What you, say, preacher? you don't go to Christ because you don't confess your ministry. What you say, the only way to Christ is through the cross. That's right. through the cross. Because the only way that God reconciled us mm -hmm. was through the cross. That's right. through death. But what's so hard about that is the cross is death. Come on, yeah. preacher. What does that mean? That means you got to give up something to get something. That's right. That means you got to give up you mm -hmm. in order to get him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's the reason that Peter fought so adamantly against it. Because Peter still had confidence in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Peter says, if everybody backslide, if everybody leave, it don't get too rough for me. Mm -hmm. If everybody turn their back on you, yet I'll stay here. Come on, but you know what, Sister Phyllis? God know us. God know us. And God told him, he said, son, you ain't going to make the month. <laughs> you won't make the month. Before the cock crows strike, you're going to deny me. Try. You, you. What you say, preacher? God knows. But, but, but what I love about God is, that didn't make God, God mad. Church folk would have said God got mad at Peter. But he said, Peter, I prayed for you. I prayed. Mm. Uh, that when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. He says, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Mother, it's something when you find out something worth it. When it's worth it, you'll go through the storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why it is do you think that we don't have as many real mothers that we used to have? they don't understand it's worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. It's oh yeah. Oh, it, it's a it ain't no it ain't no walk in the park, baby. Sure it ain't no walk in the park. Mm -hmm. You talking about being a real parent. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That's really Shaq said now when he when he when he got to be a big star and everything, then his daddy wanna come. Yeah. He made a rap song on him. <laughs> he said my biological didn't bother. Yeah. He said, this is my real dad over here. When the storm was raging, yes, right. come on now. don't come up wanting to jump on the bandwagon now that we don't want. Now that everything is going well, now you want to get on the bandwagon. No, you got to walk with me before you can ride with me. Uh-huh. He says, when we were yet without strength, when I had nothing to offer Christ, when I was ignorant to the fact that I was ignorant, mm -hmm. when I was bound and need delivering, when, when I was crazy, when I, when I was messed up, on, in due time, Christ died 
for the ungodly. Christ did not die for folks that had it together. That's the reason I can't fool with you church folk. Because y'all keep trying to put qualifications on me. Y'all keep telling me I got to be this way and I got to do this and I got to do that. And, and, and you really think you preaching when you go to preaching on folks and stuff. You got to cry loud and you got to holler against sin. Look, we can settle that. I sin, okay? Now, what you going to talk about next Sunday? We won't even have to talk about that no more. That's right. That's right. And let me add this to it and can't stop. Yes, sir. Ain't no use of me asking God to forgive me because I'm going to do it again. So what your thing is, you need to tell me what is the remedy. Has God made a way to get me from where I am to where I need to be? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, he has. Yes, he and it's called a cross. Yes. It wasn't easy, mm -hmm. but it was worth it. Yes, All right. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that. Turn over to 2 Corinthians. Go ahead, preacher. Preach, Leave me alone with that foolishness. Yes, Amen. Oh, man. I love to tell folks how old I am. That giving you some kind of idea of where my mind is. That I've been fooling with this game and this playing for quite a few years. Right. I done got knocked upside the head and played real bad mm -hmm. a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But I don't have to fall for that no more. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh huh. I preach a message sometime. I had to suffer for this. Yes, you look at me and laugh, uh huh. But I want you to know something, baby. I came out with a lesson. Uh huh. The old folks, you put it like this, Dex, they said bought sense. Yes, sir. It's expensive. But ain't nothing like when you buy yourself some sense. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I paid for that. Mm -hmm. But it was all in God's plan. Uh huh. Preach a message sometime. The, the title of the message is He Had to Shake Me. To make me. Uh, another message, I'm going to put this back on the radio soon. I play it periodically. The title of the message was, I had to fail. See, I'm a better man for my failures. I don't learn too much from my successes. But from my failures, there's something about knowing where God can bring you from. Back in Israel, they called it the landmark. It's a landmark. See, when you got a landmark, you can always get back. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You ever been somewhere and you were lost and you were telling everything? So, oh, yeah, I know where I am now. Yes, I know where I am now. Yes, See, the landmark, you may get lost, but when you find the landmark. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. but, but, Brother Preacher, when you remember from where God brought you from, uh -huh, you say, God, you know what? If you brought me from that. I remember when we couldn't even get money together to get crackers to go with the soup. And now I ain't finna fall out about this little financial drought that's coming through now. It ain't easy, but it's worth it. It ain't easy, but it's worth it. And see, the thing about it is God will hide you where you need stuff and folk don't even know you need it. You show up looking like you got it. You ain't got nothing because God will hide you. Uh-huh. It wasn't easy, baby. I didn't come here this morning looking for the easy way. Uh -huh. But when you understand the strength and the power of God, you don't get all nervous and go to biting your fingernails and pulling your hat. Well, I can't use that example anymore. Because you know that you know that you know. Mm-hmm. The songwriter said, Brother Corman Sim said, the Lord will make a way somehow. Uh, somehow. Life, life storms begin, failure begin to happen. Things are begin to be taken from you. And the devil tells you, now, now this is it. You, you get a doctor's report and the, the doctor said nothing that we can do. And, and you begin to encourage the doctor. 
You begin to tell the doctor, you said, doctor, do all you can do, but I want you to know I know another doctor that never lost a case. <laughs> I know a doctor whose arm is not shortened that he cannot say that is ear where he cannot hear. I said second Corinthians in the fifth verse. I mean fifth chapter. Fifth chapter. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. Mm -hmm. Not looking for the easy way out. It's gonna be the, the, the Bible says that, that the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Uh, when you realize that you're going to have to fight for what God has for you. Yes, sir. When you realize that God is not going to take your blessings and put them on a silver platter. Come on, when you realize that what you have. Huh, I'm going to put it like this right here. I remember one time when I was in law school and there was a gentleman, good friend of mine named Charles Push. We were leaving a meeting. It was about 10 o'clock at night. And I told him, I, I was very disgruntled within my spirit, and I told him, I said, Pastor Charles. He said, what? I said, man, everybody in here finna go home and go to sleep, man. Uh, and I got to stay up all night reading books this big because huh, I'm in law school. And he turned and he told me something. He said, well, Vanda, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, let me tell you something. I want a blessing that a lazy man can't have. Uh, I want a blessing that a scared man can't have. Uh, I want a blessing that you got to get down and dirty in order to get. I want a blessing. That you got to come out with your head bloody, but not bowed. I want a blessing. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. I want a blessing where that God just smiled and looked at the devil and tell him, I told you he wasn't going to turn around. I told you he believed me. It's two or three of us. We got a bulldog determination that we just believe down in our heart that God is going to take us through. I keep telling y'all, anybody can stay married. It just depends on what you're willing to put up with. Them old folks didn't stay married because everything was wonderful, because their husband was faithful, because everything. No, no, they didn't stay married because of that. Don't let nobody fool you. Whether it was your mom and dad. They didn't stay married because of that. They stayed married because it's not easy, but it's worth it. Huh? <laughs> Devil, you're not going to take my house. Huh? You might go down the street, but I have taken a stand. Huh? And so come hell or high water, huh? you shoot your best shot. Huh? Because I got my hand huh? in God's hand. Huh? And I know that he's able. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got this thing, Paul put it like this, Brother George. At the end of the day, Paul says, I am persuaded yeah. mm -hmm. that he is able mm -hmm. to keep that mm -hmm. which I have committed unto him. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not me. I don't put my marriage in God's hand. Yes, sir. It's not me. I put my financial condition in God's hand. And so then you might give me a pink slip. You may fire me. I may not have no job. But devil, I'm not trusting in that. I have put my... It's not easy. But it's worth it. Because I found out that let the storms rage. I found out that no matter what goes on, that when everything else has left, that God will take you huh, and rock you. Huh. The old saints put it like this. They said, blessed assurance, yeah. Jesus is mine. Yes, uh, somebody said, it's all right, just like it is. Huh. They cannot understand why you're not perplexed. Why, why haven't you given up? It's, it's not because of me, baby. It's because of whose I am. I just believe that God loved me in so much. Huh. Sister Linda, I, I just believe that God allows me to get in a tight place just to show his power. <laughs> because, you see, he can't show how great he is <laughs> until I get in a bad place. Until <laughs> uh -huh. I get the doctor report. <laughs> you know, see, 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 see you, you don't know until it's you. You don't know until it's you. When you get a phone call at nighttime, in fact, they say, uh uh, say they did. They didn't say he's sick. They, they, they didn't say he's in the hospital. They, they, they dead. He's gone. 
And so the devil said, now what you going to do now? You going to keep on preaching? You going to keep on telling folk about how good God is? You going to keep on telling? I was preaching a series in 2008 when I got the message that my brother had died. And the title of the series was Psychological Reconstruction. Uh, you see, Brother Carl Ray, God is changing my mind. Uh, I don't think like I used to think. Uh, things that used to bother me just don't bother me no more. Uh, because I got a new mind in Christ Jesus. All right. All right. No way. Psychological Reconstruction. Uh, had been preaching a, a series of messages. And so he died that Tuesday, early that morning. So Wednesday night, are you going to even go to church? Uh, I thought I... I said, devil, you ain't nothing but a lie. I can jump up in the air, fall down on the ground, snot, cry, roll, do whatever I want to do. When I get through, he's still dead. Ain't nothing we can do about that. Uh-uh. They asked David, they said, David, say you you was fasting while the child was sick. What you going to do now? David said, fix me something to eat. He said, not that many. I won't see him no more on this side. Now I'll see him on the other side. Sister Laverne, I came to church, I preached like a wild man. Uh, right over there, in that little part over there, I preached. And, and the title of my message was, Devil, It's My Mind, You Can't Have It. Uh, oh, it, it, it's not easy. But it's working. But it's worth it. Uh, preacher, the devil is after your mind. The, the devil is after your mind. The devil is trying to discourage you. The devil is trying to tell you to give up. The devil is trying to tell you to move back. But instead of moving back, you ought to take a step forward. Instead of giving up, you ought to go on. Yes, sir. He brought me too far yes, sir. for me to turn back now. Just give me one, just a minute. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, no, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Real quickly. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And all things are of God who have. He has done this for me. I just got to believe it. You see, I receive it when I believe it. You see, God speaks. When he speaks, it, it seems like that it has not appeared. But God is a God that calleth those things that are not as though they were. And so then wherever you are, it don't surprise God because you was always there in the mind of God. He was waiting on you to believe it. And the moment that I believe it, then I begin to walk in where God has already ordained it because God does not exist in time. He exists in eternity. Yes, sir. God always is. Always. Always is. Present. Where I'm going, God already is. God is a present help yes, sir. in a time of trouble. On, and so all God is trying to do for me, Sister Martha Brown, is calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. So the devil trying to get you flustered. But, but this right here, this, the circumstances are like, but, but see, see, but, but, calm down, calm down. <laughs> what, what, what you crying about, I'm already over there. Huh? And I'm already taking care of it. Huh? But I just need you to believe me. God is a present him. Just go, go to sleep. Put it in my hands. Lead a driving to us. We got this. Oh, let me run on down 19. I, I saw Lee said, To wit that God was in Christ. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. He, he, he fought the battle for me. He went in and got the victory for me. I don't get my own victory. I don't get the victory. He gets the victory. That's the reason I call him Savior. If I get the victory myself, then I'm my own Savior. But he is my Savior because he went and fought the battle to me. He went through death and he conquered death for me. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Ain't no problems between me and God. The only problems I got is me and church folk. And I'm through with them. Thank you, Jesus. So me and you don't have no problem because I don't fool with you. I don't fool with you. You can't carry on no conversation when you talk. Just you talking, I don't even talk to you. I don't come by visit you. I don't ask about you. I been to took your number out of my phone. That's the reason when you call, I go, who is it? Is it? Uh -huh. Ain't no problem between me and God. No problem. No problem. Because 
Christ reconciled me back to God. Amen. Look what he says here. Not imputing mm -hmm. their trespasses unto them. You want to spend all day talking about my trespasses, but my trespasses are not imputed unto me. Yes, sir. They are imputed, they were imputed upon Christ. Christ himself bore our sins upon the tree. That's right. We're talking about the wrong thing. We're talking about the problem when we should be talking about the solution. Yes, the solution is Jesus. Yes, the problem is sin and nothing you can do about sin. That's right. We're carnal soul under sin. Mm -hmm. But if we believe on what he did on the cross, then he does not impute those sins. Not that you don't sin, but he does not put them to your account. <laughs> All right. Not imputing okay. okay. their trespass unto them. And look, this is the last phrase. And have committed. Mm -hmm. That's a big word, preacher. It's committed. Mm -hmm. Commitment means it's something that I have that come hell or high water, I hold on to. That's All right. right. Come on now. Paul told Timothy, no man that wore off entangled himself with the affairs of this world. You leave this stuff to God. Amen. You leave this stuff to God. I promise you he is well able to take care of it. Don't let the devil distract you. Because God is well able to take care of all this. And there is no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God who is faithful will whip the temptation. Make a way to escape that you will be able to bad. Yes, sir. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. but, but it's worth it. Uh -huh. So you're going to stay. You ain't going to stay till your marriage get worth it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, honey, I wouldn't put up with that. I wouldn't put, well, baby, it ain't worth it to you. That's right. Yeah. But it's worth it. Uh -huh. Honey, I, I wouldn't that child there. I wouldn't never, but, but it's worth it. I'm going all the way with my child. You don't tell me how far to go with my child. I give him every dime I got. I, I put up with it. I let him turn around and talk to me like I got a tail and all that. And you tell me, honey, you ought to do that. That's my child. It's worth it. You do what you want to do with yours. I'm not turning my back on my child, no matter how ignorant he gets. I'm not. Committed. Say that God has committed unto us. The ministry of reconciliation. Amen. I ain't supposed to be out here beating folks upside the head, talking about you ought to stop this, you ought to stop that. What I'm supposed to be telling, I have the ministry of reconciliation on, to reconcile man back unto God, to let them know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself, that if you will believe on what he did on the cross, that what he did was efficacious and sufficient. His blood expiated every one of your sins, but you have to believe it. Yes, right. DJ, give me what I need. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Whooping him on his back. Nails in his hand. Don't think for a moment. 